Hi, welcome to another Cardboard Tuesday. I am Ferdinand the Cardboard Snacker, and this is a vlog about me just talking about games, some games I'm interested in Kickstarter, and etc. So let's go ahead and start with announcements, and that I don't really have any, except for that I have a new segment, which is a the question of the week. And moving on to that, my question of the week is, how many times do you play a week? And go ahead and leave a comment below about how many times you play a week. Um, I'll answer my question. So uh, first, um, I usually play at the minimum at least once a week. That's like once a uh, one day of gaming. And if I'm lucky, at least three. So that's about, you know, per session, that's about three to five games I would play in a gaming session. So it's, it's not too bad, you know, if I have one day a week of playing games and I'm I'm pretty happy about that but most of the time I will be uh, you know doing videos and um, editing and all that stuff because editing's the most difficult part of making the videos it's not that difficult but it's the most um, time-consuming so moving on to the Kickstarter um, the game that everyone's talking about is Scythe and that is uh, happening right now um, it's last time I checked it's almost about half a million this Kickstarter ends in November 5th, I believe. So this is uh, a game, it's a fairly big game. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, well, I guess on the, on the Kickstarter, they say it's a 4X game, which is, you know, explore, exploit, and two other ones. One of the interesting things I think about this game is that um, it's steampunk, but it's not your, you know, usual kind of steampunk. It's like, it's, it's vastly world, it's almost, I feel it's more in uh, more of an epic game, and because it's no, it's, it's very it's a big game. It's a very long game. Um, they say it's about one hundred and fifteen minutes. Uh, that's kind of precise, but why not just call it two hours? So one of the things um, a lot of people are drawn to is that the game has a, um, the art's really good, and um, I would get this game just for the art alone. But you know, it looks you know very epic, and you know the the how the art because it's like you know you have these like common folk and farmers in the foreground and then in the background you have these giant um giant machines just you know look like they're having a war while these people have to just work out in the field and so it's a it's a big game it has a lot of components it has um miniatures uh, for each of the five factions there is the so the theme is 1920s eastern europe steampunk which is it's not a very common theme you can find in the steampunk genre, I think. I don't know if there's any. I haven't read much in steampunk literature, but it's something uh, uh, a little different and something I'm intrigued in. So if you're interested in this game, I go ahead and leave a link to the Kickstarter and you can go ahead and check more information about that. So let's go into the game I played last week. So the first game uh, I started playing there was uh, Quizo. I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's uh, basically a... Um, abstract grain with five by five big wooden cubes that have either X or O. You can think of this uh, as an abstract game meets uh, tic tac toe meets um, Connect Four. So you, what do you do in this game? Is you make a you want to try to make a five in a row by um, taking one of the cubes in in a uh, five by five grid and turn it around so it's either X or O, and you're trying to make either. Um, one of the sides. So if you're X, you want to make five X's. So very simple, and uh, it's not it's not very exciting, but it's it's I, I think it's still good. The next game it was Couriers. Um, I'm starting to not like Couriers as much as I used to. Um, that's probably because I roll pretty badly in in any kind of dice game. So it's like oh, it's not that I lost. It's that I just keep rolling bad um, dice, and so it's kind of falling flat for me. So I you know. Wouldn't recommend it anymore. But on the other side, um, I played Ascension, and I I still like deck building games. <laughs> um, so the this is uh, I played this couple times already, and every time I play it with my friend who has the game, he has it. He looks like he always adds new stuff in there. So um, one one of the mechanisms I really like in the game that I found in this game session was um, some of the game, some of the cards will ask for um, you know are the cards to be played and then it will transform to a different card so the transform card this card transforms into another card which is in a different deck and you you know kind of switches it and it does like a, a really neat thing so the one i got was like draw a card an extra card every turn so that was really cool 
And the next game was Vegas Showdown. This is one of my favorite games I like. Uh, it's about v building a casino. So you have these tiles you have to bid on the on the board and you're trying to do is try to get the most points. So you may want to, it's about, you know, making the best like efficient casino, I guess. So, you know, you want your, the thing is you had, you can only have, you know, casino tiles on the casino side. You can only have hotel tiles on the on one, the other side, and there's points where like you can if you connect both sides, you get points for that, or you fill up the casino side, you get points for that too, getting most revenue and stuff. So really love this game. Uh, really love this game, and you know, so I didn't win, but uh, got third place, and but I still had a great time playing that. So the last game I played was Flip City. This is a deck building game by uh, Tasty Mintro Games. It's um, a very unusual game because uh, the cards are double sided, and so what you're trying to do in this game, you want to get, you want to play eight medals, not like earn eight medals, but play them out in one turn. So in this game, you want to flip cards around so you, you have different abilities you can do. So uh, what you try not to do in the game is try, uh, lose your turn, which is playing unhappy faces. And uh, one of the cards are the residential area. Is that you have to play those cards if you it's on top of your deck. So if the car um, the card on top of your deck is the one the card you see and you want to play that, you can go ahead and play that. But if the residential card is on top of that, you have to play. It. Pretty bad thing because unhappy faces means if you have three of them on a turn, then you have to lose your turn. So it's a, it's a it, there's a little bit of pressure luck. I did a review of this, so you can go ahead and check that out in my video section still like on the fence of the game but uh, i think the design is needs but i think that th i think it needs more variety and that's the thing that loses me in the game because you know once you kind of like play the game a couple of times like you basically see some of the strategies already already in there and there's nothing else to explore so i think more cards just needed the game to, to make this game a little better so that's it for this Cardboard Tuesday. So if you enjoyed this video or found it in any way helpful, you go ahead and hit that like button. You can go ahead and subscribe to our channel. You can go ahead and share this video. Follow me on Twitter at cbstacker.com. Send me any comments or questions at cardboardstacker at gmail.com. So I'll see you guys next week and keep on stacking games.